Welcome. In a previous video, I set up an Ingenious ESR530 whole home mesh Wi-Fi system, and I have two of those devices hooked up. I'll put a link in the description to my Ingenious playlist where you can find those videos. Also put a link to the hardware I'm using on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. And this was provided me by Ingenious, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the web interface for this system. In the previous video, I used the Enmesh app on my iPad. So using that app, I found the IP address of the master access point, and I put that in a browser here. So I'm using Safari, but you can use Chrome or any other browser. So it says this connection is not private because this is using a self-signed certificate, and that's very normal. So I'll hit show details, and I'll hit visit this website. It's gonna ask for my password, and if you're using other browsers, they may have some other messages that pop up. You don't want to ignore a message like that if you're logging into your bank or credit card company or anything like that. But this is something that's on my network, and I know it, I expect that to happen. So now I want to type in my username and password. I'll hit login. So it starts us out on the home section. It has our model name, which is the ESR530. It says operation mode is access point. It has our UID, has the time, the IP address, IPv6 LAN status, has our wireless name, our guest Wi Fi network. So I have regular wireless on, I have guest Wi Fi off. It tells us what channel we're using on 2.4 gigahertz and on 5 gigahertz. And then down below here it says mesh device list. So it lists off the two devices I have. They're two ESR 530s. And this has the location, MAC address, IP address, firmware, and the uptime. And down here we have a little chart. It says mesh connection quality. And you can look here and it says uh, wired connection. I can zoom this in. I'm just zooming with my touchpad. You can do it with your mouse. And you can see the color here is kind of a, I don't know, cyan, teal kind of color. Uh, it says optimum range. It will turn blue if it's too close. It will turn orange if it's too far. Okay, I'll go to the Wi-Fi section. So here we have the Wi-Fi settings. So we have the SSID. So you can hide the Wi-Fi name. You can separate clients. So this is if you don't want um, clients on your network to talk to each other over Wi-Fi. For security mode, we have WPA2 or disabled, and we have our passphrase. And then we have the 2.4 gigahertz band. We have channel as auto, so you can choose the channel there. You can choose 20, 20, 40, or 40 megahertz. And for five gigahertz, we have channels you can choose there. And then you can do 80 megahertz, 40, or 20. Under advanced, we have country code, and I've set mine to USA. Next, we have band steering, and that says force five gigahertz. So if you have a client on your network that can access the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz signal, when you force it to five gigahertz, it will uh, choose 5 gigahertz over 2.4 gigahertz. So 5 gigahertz tends to be faster and 2.4 gigahertz tends to have better range, generally speaking. Down here we have fast roaming enabled, so that allows us to switch between the nodes quickly. And then we have airtime fairness, and this helps uh, newer devices go faster when you have older devices on the same network. So if you change any of these settings, you can hit apply down below. Next under Wi-Fi we have guest network. So you can enable this, you can give it an SSID, and you can set the security mode. So this is nice to use if you have like friends coming over for a get together and you don't want to give them your main Wi-Fi password, you can set up a guest network and give them that password, and then you can disable it later too if you want. Next I'll click on interfaces. So on the LAN interface we have the MAC address, it shows us how many bytes we've received and transmitted, and then it has the IPv4 and IPv6 uh, addresses. I'll go down here, interface to WAN, and here we have the IPv4 connection type. It says operation mode in router or bridge mode. So I have bridge mode selected here because the last video I shot with these, I was setting it up on an existing network. The first video I made, I set it up in router mode, and you can do that all through the app interface. This is how you can set up DHCP or PPPoE or things like that on the WAN interface. The next tab is storage. So this allows you to set up file sharing with Samba. So these access points have a USB 2.0 port in the bottom. So you could stick an external hard drive on there and then share it on your network. You can also use the nFile app. I'll probably be making a future video about that. And you can enable and disable that here. Also under storage is IP cam recorder. So this would likely be for setting up some kind of an IP camera storage. The last section is tools. And we have the unique ID and then the status. We have a default DDNS name. 
and then you can set up an alias DDS name. So you can use this if you want to assign your own DDNS. DDNS is dynamic DNS. Uh, refresh time, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, and 24 hours, and the DDNS status is connected. Back up to tools, we can go to backup restore. So here it says download backup. If I hit generate archive, okay, so we have a backup file here. So that's a good idea to back up in case uh, something happens, you need to reset everything, then you can re-upload your configuration. Then we have reset to defaults. So you can hit this button and do perform reset. You can do it within the Enmesh app. And on the device itself, there's a little hole on the side that you can put a paperclip in. And you hold it in there until it starts to flash orange, I think is what it is. And that will reset the device. So only do that if you need to reset it from scratch. And then down below here, we have restore backup. So when you make that backup, if you have to reset it, you can restore it with this functionality here. I'll click back on tools. I'll go to restart. So this says restart mesh network, restart all, and then we can restart individual devices. I'll go to firmware upgrade. So here we can upload a firmware image. I like using the Enmesh app for this because you can go in there and it will automatically do your firmware updates. And you can even set a little checkbox in there to have it automatically do it, I think at 4 a.m. every morning. And then we have system logs. So if you're having any problems or anything, you can look in here to uh, you know, see if anything's showing up in the logs. And then of course on the right, we have logout. So that's all for this video. I just wanted to do a quick overview of the web interface. You can do pretty much the same things in the Enmesh app, but some people may prefer the web interface. And as far as I know, you have to set it up in the Enmesh app. Um, you can't set it up from scratch using the web interface, but I could be wrong. If anyone wants to correct me, leave a comment below. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.